Hey there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and uh, today we're going to run through a tutorial in Dynamo and Autodesk Revit that deals with sheet creation using Dynamo. So you remember that the last tutorial I went through how to create floor plan sets using Dynamo um, and now we're going to prepare the sheets in this tutorial for them so that we can ultimately place them on views as well using Dynamo. So a three-part workflow to automate views to sheets. Um, so covered in this session we're going to run through a process where we create some Excel data we use Dynamo to process that data, we then create the sheets using that data, set the parameters and then commit them as placeholders, um, all as one script in a workflow. So um, there's no custom notes required for this script either, they're quite basic functions, um, but it would be, be a good tutorial for anyone trying to figure out how to work with Excel data in Dynamo. Um, so without further ado, we'll move on to the tutorial. So that's the Excel data, we'll get to that in a second. So if I go to Dynamo, this is my current build um, for anyone that's curious and wants to follow along at home. So just a recap. So you may have recalled, I worked with the model previously with the scope box, some levels, um, and I've generated some floor plans with automatic naming using Dynamo. So we've got five sets of views at the moment for the ground floor up to level 10 in principle. So we want to create a sheet for each of those. So what I've done already is I've went to Excel and I've set up some data that I want to push into Dynamo. So basically my columns represent my parameters. So my sheet number, sheet name, I've got two parameters that I'm using to sort my sheets as well in a browser organization. So I'm also applying that browser organization to sheets. So I've got a parameter called sorting one and sorting two. So it's important in this script that these headers match exactly the parameter name that you want to push things to because the script will ultimately source these parameters and use them to guide this data so you can essentially make as many columns with parameters as you want using this script. I've seen other scripts where they literally just say, get item at index three, do this, index four, do this, index five, but it's not as smart because you can't add as many parameters as you want. But this way your users could add more parameters if they knew how this works. I'm gonna just add a drawn by, checked by, approved by, and then I've just basically filled it out in order. Um, there's been a little bit of manual entry to do this. So for example, my process was more or less to set one up and then from there, find the things that were different between each one. So now I'm making a set of signage plans, for example. So I'd replace A14 with A19, replace all. Um, I'm doing signage, so wall set out would become signage. And then 19 wall set out would become 19 signage. Um, but that, that's not really too long to set up. If you really knew how your template needed to be configured, you could potentially automate these based on the view templates on sheets and get it to make a sheet for every single view in your model with a template. Um, but I, I haven't worked at a place before where it's been that disciplined that people could rely on the script to be that intelligent. So I always like people to at least premeditate what they're gonna put into Revit um, using Excel where possible via Dynamo. So we'll just keep that off to the side. So if I go into Dynamo, we'll start setting up a script that can actually process this data. So we're gonna to go to manual mode. Um, we're just gonna do a save as, just so we can save our script. Uh, just save it here, call home four. Okay, so we're gonna start with an Excel node. So we're gonna import Excel data. This is quite important. So we need to get a file and then a file from path node. So we get a file path node first and a file from path. So this essentially is gonna be the way we get our Excel data into Revit. So we're gonna path to sheet list one. So we'll just try, yeah, that's correct, cool. And then we'll take the sheet name, which in this case is string and it's called sheet one. And at this point we could prepare Dynamo player as well and make these both inputs. Um, so you can call this sheet name and file path is probably okay. We need to get a couple of booleans because we do want to read these all as strings. Um, we don't want to read them as numbers if they're numbers. And we don't necessarily need to show Excel while we do this. So we can set that to false. So at that point, if I run this script, you'll basically get a whole data set from here. Um, so typically what I do with Excel from here is I add an integer slider. Um, to remove a certain number of rows from the top of the table. So we want to get rid of our header row in principle. So drop item, and we're going to drop the first item. So we'll drop one item. So the list that you'll get after that is basically your data set. And there you go. 
Um, you could also get item at index, uh, and we'll do two get item at indexes, and we're going to get items at index one, or zero and one from the dropped list. So we're going to take this data. Sorry, we'll get the dropped list instead. So this will get us our sheet. Uh, sorry, first I have to transpose my data. That's right. Okay, so. We're going to transpose so that our columns and our rows switch positions so that we get our columns instead. And there you go. So now we get our columns of data minus the header. So we're going to get these two indexes. We'll get another one. And what we should have now is two sets of data. One of them represents all our sheet numbers and one of them represents all our sheet names. So at this point, we could actually create sheets without setting any parameters onto them as placeholders. So if I go placeholder sheet, create placeholder, you could just say number name, play, and you've got sheets. However, I like to apply some parameters to them as well. So that is the purpose of, I guess, this Excel table that we had before. It's there to process a whole bunch of data that we want to apply to those sheets. So just close that. So we're actually going to start extrapolating this data now instead. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the top row of data. And these are basically the names of our parameters, but we're also going to drop, we're going to drop the first two because we know that we don't want those because they are um, basically the sheet name and sheet number. And we've already used those parameters using a different node. So we're going to drop that by two. And you'll see now we have sorting one, sorting two, drawn by, checked by, approved by. And I've actually just pressed play and probably already created a set of placeholders by accident there. But I'll show you that this at least comes in. So this is your placeholder set that we've just created. Um, so you can see that they've come in, they've got their names, they've got their numbers. I've got one that's unnamed here. I believe that might be an error. I'll just double check that one. I'm not sure how that one came in. A411. I'm not sure if Dynamo made that sheet actually. But we can check by disseminating the results. Actually, we need to look here. We'll just see if there's an A411 coming out of this somehow. 141. No, so it must have been in Revit originally. Okay, so we're just going to freeze this node so that we stop creating sheets every time. Okay, so we've got the headers. Now we need our data. So what we're going to do is we're going to get back to that transposed list and we're going to drop the first two items from here as well. So we're not using those so drop items and we're going to drop two and you can use these consistently between different nodes. If you know that the number is never going to change because we know we're always dropping those first two things. So that will basically give us a set of lists of data that we want to push into these respective parameters. So all we need to do from here is use a special node called list combine, which is similar to a node called list map. Um, only the list combine will actually apply common functions across the same levels of lists. So it will work with item zero for multiple lists and item one, item two, um, instead of list map, which will apply common functions to an individual item in one list. So what we'll do is we'll get set parameter by name. We want to set these sheets parameters that will come out this end. But what we're going to do is apply it uh, to element. We're going to make this shortest, the shortest possible listing, just so it's working with one sheet per, per set of data. And then we're going to leave these two alone because these are actually going to become the lists that we combine via this function. So this is our function. We're using to combine our lists to this common one. And then the, the way we're going to combinate them is we're going to take the parameter first. So we're going to apply a parameter name and we're going to apply these parameters. And what this should give us is a set of sheets that will apply each of these values to each of these respective parameters. So it's quite a quick, easy little script actually. So if I run this, so we should now have placeholder sheets again. See, I'm just applying a, a title block at this point. Um, so the reason I prefer placeholder sheets over making the sheets straight into the model is that you can just get the user to pick their title block or title blocks at that point. It's a lot faster for the user to deal with than hoping that Dynamo knows exactly the right title block to use. 
So you'll see that we've got those sorting parameters applied to them all. We've got the approved by, checked by, drawn by, sheet name, sheet number. So it's quite a powerful little script actually, this one. And I'll just show you one that I've sort of packaged up earlier um, in Dynamo, uh, for Dynamo Player. Um, so we, we sort of made a few steps there to deal with the Dynamo Player compatible script. But I'll just show you one that I've done a bit of the cleaning up on just to save some time. So basically set up how many rows to ignore Excel data sheet. So these are all inputs, input, input, and input. From there, everything else is automatic because it's all based on how your Excel table is built up in principle. So if I just save this, close this, I'll go and boot up Dynamo Player. But while I'm, while I'm there, I might actually just go and add some more Excel data just to show you how flexible this, this tool can be. Because we also want to add that extra column. I think there was one that I didn't use, which was, if I just make a new sheet, we had drawn by, checked by, reviewed by, designed by. Okay, so let's, let's add designed by as well. Um, assuming it wasn't there before. And this is, and due to the way we've mapped our data, we can actually just expand this uh, each time. So we can just keep adding fields. So a way you could work with your users is actually make this a pre-configured Excel table. And this could be um, drop downs uh, that are validated by a table of potential parameters you'd accept for your users. And they could just keep adding them um, with confidence that the script will work. Uh, feel free to look at one of my other tutorials that deals with Excel techniques and formulas. Um, that's sort of where I cover that workflow as well. Okay, so we'll just go to home three and we'll just go to the properties of that script just so we can path the Excel file. Sometimes the properties can take a little while to open in Dynamo Player, um, but shouldn't take too much longer. Great. So we're already parting to the right place, um, but that is where you could navigate to your data. Sheet one, you could ignore more than one row if your users had a reason to add more than one. Um, so in this case, we're just going to ignore one. Whoops. One. There we go. Okay. Um, so at that point, we'd press play on the script. It would process. You can see it's extremely quick. Um, so view sheets, there they are. And we'll just bake them into the model. And we'll just go double check that that parameter made it in as well that we just added. And there you go. So it's, it's added that parameter as well. Um, so that's how flexible the script can be. And I found that this is the best way to add scripts in Dynamo um, to the model. There's a few techniques you can do to automate placing title blocks and sheets, but I find that that's usually too much. Um, so there we go. So that's that's in principle this part of the, the workflow covered. Um, as you can see, it's a very simple tutorial, but it's a really helpful script. Um, and the next part we'll look at is automatically placing views on sheets. Again, we'll probably use Excel to guide that data, um, but also get that positioning uh, correct as well. So thanks for watching today. Um, really quick. Um, so hopefully you got something out of that and hopefully you can follow along at home and create your own, your own script as well. Um, any questions or feedback, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Um, especially if you have any questions on list combining and list mapping. I know that can be quite challenging uh, for people to get their head around. Um, so thanks for listening and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Uh, take care. Bye.